Go ahead and go to James chapter 2. Uh, James chapter 2. Last week I preached a message, what is the big deal about faith? And today I'm going to preach a message, what is the big deal about faith? But at the same time, this message is going to be quite a bit different than the last message that I preached. You know, last week I showed how the Bible is crystal clear that we are saved by grace with, you know, through faith and without works. I mean, the Bible is so clear on that. We have been justified, you know, by faith and not by the works of the law. We're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing of ourselves, you know, our, our faith, that's it. False religion and even many Baptists, they constantly try to find a way to get works in there somehow. You know, they've even turned repentance into a work. Instead of it just being a change of mind and a believing on Christ, they've made it a change in behavior. You know, they've added repenting of your sins in there, you know, as we, because we want to do something. We want to have some way to earn it. And, you know, what's interesting is you can show people throughout the scripture, you know, over and over again, it's mentioned how salvation is by grace, you know, through faith, without works. You can show them that, but they, they will ignore all those verses and they often want to go to James chapter 2. And we're going to read James chapter 2 because, and I've explained this before, but I want to show you a few other things uh, that I've maybe I've not spelled out as clearly before to try to help you with this. But James chapter 2, if you listen to a lot of people preach out of James chapter 2, I mean, it sounds like it totally defeats what I preached last week. And listen, if you ever read one verse that seems to contradict you know, 20 other verses, you know, I would go after what the 20 clear verses say and not just change my doctrine on that one. But listen, we claim around here that the Bible does not contradict itself. And I still make that claim that the Bible does not contradict itself. But let's go and read James chapter 2. And we'll start reading in verse 14. It says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. I've had people that have been here before, nobody here now or that's a member here, that have been here and they've heard me preach about how you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say believing is not enough. And they will quote this verse, the devils believe and tremble. Well, what about that? Well, I'll show you in a little bit. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers that had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So we see here, Abraham was justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac upon the altar. That you know, to you know, that you have to have you know faith or faith without works is dead. You know, you have to have works for it to be to mean anything. And so people will take this passage. And they will add works of salvation. Or most Baptists, they know you can't ever add works of salvation. So the way they have spun this, and they'll use James chapter 2, is that if you're saved, you will have works. You know, you didn't get saved by works, but if you are truly saved, if you truly repented, in whatever definition you want to use of repentance, then you will have works. Well, the only problem with that, the Bible teaches what proves we're saved. It's not our works in many other passages. It's the blood of Christ. That's the Bible teaches that in many passages. But what they will do is they'll say, well, you know, if that person that gets saved, if you're out soul winning, you lead somebody to the Lord, you don't know if that person really got saved. You know, we we need to wait and see if they come to church, you know, and that proves they got saved. Well, the only problem with that, the Bible doesn't teach that we're justified by our church attendance. Teaches we're justified by the blood of Christ. But here in James 2, 
it says that Abraham was justified by works. Okay. And I hate to say this because this term has been hijacked, but the key is to rightly divide. Okay. And now, and the, and the way the dispensationalists will spend this is they got to rightly divide and they'll say, who's he talking to? You know, and it'll go, James is written to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. This was for a different dispensation. But listen, nobody was ever saved by works, including Abraham, who was mentioned in this passage, but it does say he was justified by works. What's that talking about? Well, the, the thing that we've got to understand, okay, like I said, this week, the title of my message is the same as last week, but it's a completely different message. I'm going to be talking about something completely different. Things we got to understand, there are certain words that are associated with salvation that are not always about salvation. For example, the, the term saved. Okay? Just because somebody is saved, or you know, the term saved in the Bible is not always a reference to someone getting saved spiritually. Okay? You can get saved by a police officer. Okay? That does not mean you're going to heaven. It just means you got saved physically. You know, and even terms like faith. Okay, faith is not always about salvation. You can I can have faith that uh, you know, Brother Lonnie is going to keep his promise to me. You know, but that's not a saving faith, is it? And that faith might be good, it might not be good. You know, he might come through, he might not. You know, there's you know, faith is not always about salvation. You know, even words like redeemed is not always about salvation necessarily. And so in Romans chapter four and verse two, I want to read two verses here that appear to completely conflict, and I want to give you an illustration to show exactly, you know, how this actually does make sense. But Romans 4, 2 says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So right here we see that Abraham was not justified by works. It says if he were, he'd have whereof to glory. But listen, nobody has any, nobody can glory in their salvation. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. And Abraham cannot boast, but the Bible says if he were justified by works, he hath wear of the glory. But he was not justified by works. He believed God. And it was accounted unto him for righteousness. But then James 2 verse 21 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So right here we have two things that seem to be completely conflicting with each other. Okay, But understand, here, here's what's going on here. In Romans and in James, Paul and James are talking about two completely different things. They're talking about two completely different subjects. So what do you mean by that? Well, here, um, let's just suppose, for example, that there was a fire in somebody's home. All right. Let's say there was a fire in Brother Lonnie's home and the fire department came and they rescued his whole family except for him. Okay. And let's say I'm, I'm preaching Brother Lonnie's funeral and I would say, you know what, you know, thank God the rest of his family was saved. We wish Brother Lonnie would have been saved, but he was not saved. He burned in the fire. Okay? You all know what I'm talking about. But then later in the message, I might be saying, you know, Brother Lonnie's gone now, but thank God he was saved. Well, I said one time he was not saved, another time I said he was saved. What's going on? Am I going crazy? No, I'm talking about two different things. When I talk about him not being saved, I'm, that's a reference to him not being saved from physical death, not being saved from the fire. But later when I'm saying, thank God he was saved, I'm referring to being saved in the spirit. I'm talking about the fact that he was a believer in Jesus Christ and he is in heaven. I'm talking about two completely different things. And so last week we talked about faith. That was a faith that brings salvation. And the faith that brings salvation is a faith that is without works. Okay? So there, there's two kinds of faith. And all faith requires work, but when it comes to salvation, our faith is in the work of Jesus Christ. We cannot be saved by our works, but we are saved by the work of Jesus Christ. And so when it comes to our salvation, the Bible teaches that we have to have faith in the work of Jesus Christ. I've got to believe that what Jesus did for me was enough. That I don't have to do any works. That I just have to accept the free gift of salvation. And that kind of faith 
is what brings salvation. But listen, anything after salvation, when it comes to faith, they require work. So you understand that what I'm going to be preaching today, I'm going to be talking about you doing some works. I'm going to be talking about you having faith and having works, but understand the works and the faith we're talking about have nothing to do with salvation. So my message I'm preaching this week, it doesn't conflict with what I preached last week. Last week we were talking about faith that brings salvation, and that is without works. That is only in the work of Jesus Christ. So the difference between what James was talking about versus what Paul was talking about is James is talking about being justified before man while Paul is talking about being justified before God. See, we cannot be justified before God by works. Y'all understand that? None of us in here on your best day, you are not going to impress God with your works. The only thing, the only work that will impress God, the only work that will please God was the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That was the work that pleased him. Our works cannot please God when it comes to bringing salvation. But listen, we cannot be justified before man without works. You can't do it. You cannot be justified before man without works. I can say I have faith. I can say that I'm saved. I can say that I'm on my way to heaven. But if I don't have some works to back it up, people aren't going to believe me. I can say that I love you. I can say that I care about you. But if I don't have some works to go along with that, nobody's going to believe. And so we see here in James chapter 2, when it says, you know, um, you know, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Well, is that talking about soul salvation? Or is that talking about, uh, let's say maybe a brother or sister being naked and destitute of daily food? Somebody who's hungry, somebody who needs something to survive physically, is my faith going to save that person? Absolutely not. Listen, if somebody comes in here and they're hungry and they have need and they're, I mean, they're starving, they need something for survival, is, is me saying, listen, I've got faith that God's going to feed you. Is that going to help that person? No. You know what I need to do? My faith needs to have some works. And you know what I need to do? I need to feed that person. I need to go take them out and get them a meal. I need to help that person because if my faith doesn't have any works, it's dead. It's not going to do anybody any good. It's not going to help anybody out. You know, you can, you know, and a lot of people do that. There's a lot of people who they talk a good game when it comes to faith, but they don't walk a good game. Okay, it says in verse 18, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay, now is this talking about salvation or is this talking about our faith and just doing the right thing? Okay, now the devils do believe that there is one God, but are they obedient to God? Absolutely not. Are they doing the will of God? Absolutely not. So you know what? Who cares? Somebody says, I believe God. And there's people out there. You know, we run into them when we're out soul winning, knocking on doors. They say that they believe God. They say that they're a believer, but they're not going to church. They're not doing any good works. Now, does that mean they are not going to heaven? Well, here's the thing. They're not going to stand before me on judgment day. They're going to stand before God. And when they stand before God... He's not going to judge them by their works. It's going to be about their faith. But for me, I'm trying to figure out if this person's saved or not. Okay? If they don't have any works, I'm always going to be scratching my head. I'm always going to be wondering. I'm going to be thinking that they are not saved. And they might be saved. But listen, they're not going to stand before me on judgment day. But understand, because they don't have works, they're not going to be justified before me. But where does the Bible say they have to be justified before me to go to heaven? It doesn't teach that. And so, but at the same time, there are, there's people out there, you know, people, they get so mad when preachers like me, we'll talk about other preachers and say they're on their way to hell and we'll say that they're not saved. But listen, I can't see their faith. I can only see their works. I can only see what they're teaching. You know, they get mad at us when we talk about the three gospel crowd and we say they're on their way to hell. Well, 
listen, I can only see your works. I can only hear what's coming out of your mouth. And when you're saying something that the Bible says that they teach that, let them be accursed. I'm not going to think you're saved. You know, if you, if a person says they're saved, maybe a coworker, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but I hear him just, I mean, just the biggest filth coming out of his mouth. I mean, I don't, you know, they don't go to church. They don't do any good things. I'm not going to think they're saved, but does that mean they're not saved? Not necessarily, but understand they're not going to be justified before me. And we've got a lot of people today that I'm afraid are saved, but they're not showing it. They don't have any works. And so, you know what? They're a terrible testimony. They're a bad testimony for God. Nobody's going to listen to them. We've got guys like Lot in the Bible who the Bible teaches was saved. Lot was a right, Bible says that righteous man dwelling among them. He lived there in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says he was a righteous man, not because of his works, but because he was a believer in God. But the Bible teaches that when the angels told him that God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, that he went to go tell his daughters who were married. And the Bible says he seemed as one that mocked. They didn't believe him. Why is that? Because Lot didn't have the works in his life. And so because of that, he was not even justified to his own family. His own family wouldn't even listen to him. Why? Because he didn't have any works. And so his faith, he had faith that God was going to do what he said and he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But understand, his faith that he had, it didn't have any works. And so nobody listened to him. Nobody believed him. And it didn't help anybody out. Now listen, it still saved him. The angels took him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't they? He had to get drug out of there and they drug him out because of the fact he was saved, but the man did not have works. And so as a result of that, his faith didn't help anybody. His faith didn't, it couldn't save his daughters and his son-in-laws and probably some grandkids. And so y'all need to understand that we do after we get saved, it is very important that we have works. Otherwise our faith isn't going to do anybody else any good. And we do, we got, we got a lot of people too, that even that, you know, that are here sometimes and people who, you know, they'll talk to me and they're supportive of our church and man, you know, brother Tommy, I hope, I hope God does great things in your church. Even people here in town, it's like, you know, I'm praying, you know, the Lord blesses your church. Well, you know what? Why don't you bless our church? Why don't you start coming to church? You know, or even people here, you know, brother Tommy, I believe God's going to help us in the church. God, you know, I believe God's going to help us do this and God's going to help us do that. Well, how about you help us? I'm glad you have faith that God's going to help us, but why don't you help? You know, why don't you give? Why don't you get involved? Why don't you go soul winning? You know, why don't you do some works? I'm glad you say you have faith, but you know what? I'd like to see your works because your faith isn't doing us any good at all. We need the works. Okay. And I know that sounds weird. It sounds like it flies in the face of what I said last week, but understand I'm talking about something different. Okay. We don't need your works so you can go to heaven. We need your works so we can benefit from it. So we can see great things happen. So we can see your life get better. So we can see our church grow. So we can see more things get accomplished because listen, when I got saved, I got saved because I believed what Jesus, the work of Jesus Christ. I trusted in him. I call the name of the Lord. But you know what? When it comes to seeing other people saved, my faith without works won't save anybody else. You know what I've got to do? I've got to have faith with works. You know what I have to do? I have to say, you know what? I believe God's going to save people in our town. But if I don't go out and actually give them the gospel, then what good's my faith going to do? My faith's going to do absolutely nothing. My faith without works is dead. If I want to see people saved, I've got to have faith with works. I've got to go out and I've actually got to give people the gospel. And so there's many people, they say they believe that you should read your Bible. They believe you should pray, go to church, you know, give, do all these things, but not that many people do it. So who cares what you believe? If you're not doing the works, who cares what you believe? Who cares what you say? I can say that I love my wife, but what good is it if I don't show her? You know, and that, that's what we've got to do. We've got to have the works with it if in, other, in order for it to accomplish anything. And so some, they, they try to use faith 
as an excuse to do absolutely nothing. Listen, thank God that we didn't have to do anything to get saved. Because the Bible teaches we are incapable of doing anything. But does it, you see anywhere in the Bible where it's taught after we, you know, it does teach, you know, do nothing to get saved except believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But does, does anybody even get the impression from anything else we read in the Bible that we do nothing for the rest of our lives? No, there's actually a lot of commands. There's a lot of things that God wants us to do. We were not saved by works, but the Bible says we were saved unto good works. God ordained that we should walk in them. God wants us doing some good works. And many people, they try to use the word faith as an excuse for doing absolutely nothing. Look at what it says in verse 14 of James chapter 2. And what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them uh, not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Many people, they'll do that. Just be warmed and filled. I'm going to speak the word, I'm going to do, and I'm going to do nothing, and I'm just going to hope that it accomplishes something. But that is ridiculous. If you have faith, you're going to do what God said to do. You're going to do the works. I can say, you know, I believe, you know what? I believe God's going to provide for my family. But does that mean I'm supposed to sit around and do nothing? No, if I have faith, I'm going to do the works. Well, what does the Bible say? Six days shalt thou labor and do, and do all thy work. And the seventh day we rest. We got some people today, every day is the Sabbath day for them. They never work at all. And then they're wondering why they can't pay their bills. They're wondering why they can't do the things that they need to do. But listen, if we have faith, we're going to be obedient. We're going to, if I believe God's going to provide for my family, then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what God said to do. And I'm going to get out there and I'm going to work. I'm going to go to the ant. And I'm going to learn from the ant. I'm not going to be some sluggard and some lazy bum. I'm going to do the things that God said to do. If I believe that God is going to save souls, I'm going to do what God said to do. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to knock doors. I'm going to give people the gospel. If I believe that God keeps his promises, I'm going to believe that if I do what God said to do, God will do what he said he's going to do. And you all see when it comes to everything else, Besides salvation, when it comes to faith, we have to have works. It does not teach that you know Jesus Christ does all the work for us and everything after salvation. We've got to do the works. We've got to go and give the gospel. Jesus commissioned the disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're supposed to be the ones that are doing the footwork in the church. It's up to us to do these things. And the Bible teaches... You know, many people today, they'll take faith, that word faith, and act like that's an excuse for doing absolutely nothing. You know, I can't, I want God to do great things in this church, but I can't just sit around and pray all the time. I've got to actually get out and do some work. I've got to go out and I've got to invite people to church. I've got to give the gospel. I've got to study my Bible. I can't just show up here on Saturday and as I get ready to preach my message, just sit around and pray that the Lord just gives me a message. You know what I've got to do? I've got to get in the Bible and I've got to read it and I've got to study it. Because that's how God gives us messages. That's how God speaks to us about things. We've got to do the things that God has commanded us to do. Look, uh, turn over Numbers chapter 32. I, I've shared this with you before, but I want to share it again because I think it's good. You know, we live, we live in a wicked world. Uh, we saw, you know, everybody heard about what happened last week at that church down in Texas where somebody came through and shot up the place. You know, horrible. We live in a wicked world with wicked people. And you know what? The Bible makes it clear that, you know, as time goes on, things are going to get worse and worse. And in Deut or Numbers chapter 32 and verse 20, I want you to notice what it says. And Moses said to them, if ye will do this thing, if ye will go armed before the Lord to war and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he hath driven out his enemies from before him and, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Everybody knows that verse, be sure your sin will find you out. But what it was talking about, it's saying, well, listen, when you go over there, you go armed. Now, why did God say that? 
Well, because the people over there were going to be armed and they were going to be trying to kill them. And so God said, I want you to go over armed. Now, what's interesting about that, sometimes God told them to go fight battles basically unarmed, didn't they? Remember the story of Gideon and his 300 men? They took those pitchers and the torts and torches. And I mean, God pretty much fought that battle all by himself. God told them a little bit after, or later uh, at the Battle of Jericho, go march around seven times and everybody start yelling. God told them sometimes to go fight battles without weapons. But in this particular case, God said, you go over armed. And if you don't, be sure your sin will find you out. What does that mean? Well, it means these people are going to attack you with arms and you're going to get defeated because you have no way to defend yourself. And understand that faith, it doesn't mean just sitting around trusting God. It means obedience to God. And in this case, God wanted them armed. And I believe God wants us to protect ourselves. I'm, and, you know, thank God, you know, we've got people here that, you know, they have faith. They believe what the Bible says. It talks about the world getting worse and worse. And so you know what they do? They're here armed, you know, legally. And, and, and I, I, think, I, think, I think that's fine. I need, I need to get my conceal and carry permit. I, I, I'm all for people carrying legally. Why would we do that? Shouldn't you just have faith? Well, listen, faith doesn't mean just sitting around doing nothing. I know there are psychopaths out there. Okay, I know that we have perverts in this community. So you know what? I'm not just going to let my kids walk the streets, let my little girls just go out and walk the streets and say, well, I'm just going to trust God that they're going to be okay. No, it's called some, use some common sense. Sometimes we need to protect our family. And, and I've heard people say that. I don't even know why we need it. You know, any of you need to have guns. You, know, you should just have faith that God's going to protect you. Well, listen, faith just means obedience to God. I'm going to do what God says to do. And when God sent them into a land that was going to have enemies that were armed, God said, you go over armed. And if you don't, be sure your sin will find you out. And so I personally, you know, we know, we know we live in a society of psychopaths and nutcases and perverts. And so I think it's important. I think we're being obedient. I believe you're having faith when you are armed and when you carry. It's just, it's just common sense. We wouldn't tell the policemen to go and do their job unarmed. So these policemen, they just need to have faith. No, they don't. They need to be armed. And that is having faith. They're just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's common sense. And people do. You know, they, will, they will use faith as an excuse to, to do nothing. You know, go ahead. Quit paying your bills. Well, I have faith that God's going to take care of the bill collector. I got faith that God's going to... No, God wants you to pay your bills. God wants you to do what you need to do. And I, I've just got faith that it's just going to go away. I've got faith that that company I owe money to is going to burn to the ground and lose all the records of the money I own. Yeah. That is not what faith is. Okay? You need to have some works. You need to go out and you need to work. You might even need to sell some stuff. You just you need to do what God said to do. And it, it does. Faith, there is, with all faith, there is always works. What about salvation? Yeah, there's works there, but it's the work of Jesus Christ. That is the one difference. And, but people will. They figured out that faith without works, our works, is what saves us. And, but they've decided that all faith requires no work. But no, listen, with faith comes works. It's just with salvation, it was the work of Jesus Christ. That's the only difference. And so it is, you know, it, it's, it's a ridiculous argument. But uh, you know, we, do, we trust in the Lord and we practice faith by keeping his commandments. I believe if I do what God said to do, God will do what he said he's going to do. I believe if I'm obedient, that the Lord's going to bless me. My faith in the word of God causes me to be obedient to the scriptures. My faith in God is in the word of God is what causes me to keep the commandments and do the things that God says to do. The faith that I have in God, it causes action in my life. And the faith that brings salvation, it causes me to say, you know what? I'm not going to do the works. I'm just going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, you've got people on the other side of the crowd, they understand the James 2 faith, and they apply that to salvation. And say, yep, yeah, no, you got to work to get salvation too. You know, you got to do works. No, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different subject. If you go, we don't have time to do it, but if you go through Hebrews 11, 
In the first part of Hebrews 11, it's talking about faith that brought salvation with guys like Abraham, with Abraham and Abel, people like that. But then later, in the, it talks about them just doing great things through faith that weren't about salvation. And in those cases, you do see people doing great works. And their great works accomplish great things and because they had great faith. And so it is. In Hebrews, the first part, it's that faith that brings salvation. But after that, it's the faith that brings just great things and great victories. And those things require work. And so, you know, um, you know this means too, having faith means we keep God's commandments even when we don't understand them. Hey, I don't understand why I've got to love my enemies. But you know what God said to do that? I don't understand why God said, vengeance is mine. I will re- recompense, saith the Lord. You know, I... It doesn't seem like God's taking care of these things quick enough. But you know what? The Bible says the Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men come out count slackness. I don't know if I quoted that exactly right. But we see all these th- examples in the Bible and our faith in them, it causes us to be obedient even when we don't understand them. As a, par- you know, a parent who does not spank their child and they say, they're just, I'm just trusting in the Lord that He's going to get a hold of their heart. I'm just trusting the Lord that He's going to make sure they turn out good. No, listen, if you have faith, you're going to do what God said to do. God said to spank them. God said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And one of the main things you see in the book of Proverbs about training is using the rod. And people, But parents will do that. No, no, I love them too much. And no, I'm just going to trust God that He'll get a hold of their heart. No, listen, if you trusted God... You would do what God said to do, and that is spanking them, which isn't pleasant. And uh, my kid's going to hate me if I do that. No, they're going to hate you if you don't do that. That's just, that's just reality. But you know what? Some young parent, they're not going to understand that. But if they have faith in the Word of God, they're going to say, you know what? Who cares? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do what God said to do. And so, you know, if, if in the Bible, the Bible says, you know, whoever, if you spare the rod, you, know, you hate your son. That's what the Bible says. And you know, so are, are we, who are we going to have faith in? Well, I'm going to have faith in God. Well, that means I'm going to do what God said to do. We've got, there's a lot of young men. I, I've known some young guys. And one, you know, a good friend of mine, he was like, he's always sitting around waiting for God to bring him a wife. And I'm like, you know, you, you don't have to just sit there and do nothing. You're allowed to go look. You know, you're allowed to go search. The Bible says, you know, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. You know, when you find something, it usually means you were looking. Okay? Nothing wrong with looking. You know, you, and, and that's, you know, some guy, he's unemployed, doesn't have a job. Well, I'm just waiting for the Lord to give me a job. Well, hey, have you even looked in the newspaper for job openings? Have you even applied everywhere? And, you know, I'm just waiting for somebody to show up at my door and, you know, offer me a job. That's not how it works. Listen, if you have faith, you're going to do what God said to do. You're going to go out there and you're going to do something. And so in order to do great things for God, we must have faith. And that's going to, and with works. And so there's only so much that we can accomplish in our flesh. And so if something supernatural is going to happen, then we need, we have to have faith. Matthew 17, verse 19 says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. We, do, we, want, we want to see that supernatural things happen. We want to see great things accomplished. But the Bible says if we're going to do that, we've got to have faith. Even faith as a grain of a mustard seed would accomplish great things. But if we're going to see souls saved, if we're going to see lives changed, we are going to need a lot more than great personalities, you know, an exciting program. We're going to need the power of God. But we get the power of God when we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And what does the Holy Spirit do? People today, they think the Holy Spirit's when something comes over you, man, you just get excited and you feel good and you're raising your hands and everybody's happy. No, that's not the leading of the Holy Spirit. The leading of the Holy Spirit, He's going to cause you to obey the Word of God. He's going to cause you to do keep the commandments of God. He is going to lead you into all truth. That's what the Holy Spirit does. 
And the Holy Spirit actually leads us away from the things of the flesh and it will lead us toward keeping the commandments of God. The Holy Spirit will cause us to have faith. And if we have faith, we will be obedient. We will have works. We will do the things that God has commanded us to do. And as a result of that, as a result of the Holy Spirit leading us, as a result of our faith it will, causing us to have works, those works, they won't earn salvation. They can't do that, but they can cause great things to be done for God. They can cause us to see souls saved. It can cause us to see great works done as a church. It can cause you to have a better life. It can cause you to get victory over the sin in your life when you have faith accompanied with works. And so the reason this kind of faith is a big deal is because the things of God will never make sense to us because of our flesh. This is where people are at. Oh, the Bible doesn't make sense to me. I don't see why I have to do that. I'd rather do something else. But walking in the Spirit and walking by faith, it goes completely contrary to our nature. It's not what we want to do. There's going to be many things that God's going to ask of us that do not line up with our way of thinking. And we're not capable of understanding God's ways because His ways are higher than ours. His ways are beyond our comprehension, but God's ways are always right every single time and we will only follow them and we can only follow them by faith. That's it. And many people, they want to understand it. No, we do it by faith. I don't understand why God wants to save me without works for free. Seems like it ought to cost me something. But you know what? God said, no, it's without works. It's free. It's a gift. Okay, Lord, I'll accept your gift of salvation. That, that, you know, that, that's faith that brings salvation. But you know what? Now that I'm saved, I'd like to see some great things accomplished. I'd like to see the Lord do a work in my life. I'd like to see the Lord do a work in this church. And so you know what? God said, all right, here's how you do it. You need to keep the commandments of God. Here's how you run a church. Here's how you win souls. Here's how you do all these things. And if I have faith, okay, in order to win souls, God said to go into all the world, preach the gospel. Everything else, everything else besides salvation, when it comes to our faith, it requires action on our part. And it's going to go against our nature. It's not always going to make sense. And that's where faith comes in. Just like salvation without works doesn't make sense. That's where faith comes in. Just like loving your enemies, how does that help? That's where faith comes in. We're going to do what the Bible says to do. And so that's why faith is such a big deal and why it's so important. So I hope that made sense to you. I hope I didn't confuse everybody. I hope that was crystal clear. Uh, you know, the difference between what we see in James 2 and Romans, it's, it's two different things. There's, it's, there's faith that brings salvation. There's faith that brings great things. One's without works. One is with works. And so I hope that was a help. So with that, let's all stand.